We're back with more with Marilyn Hickey and Sarah Bowling, who just released Blessing the Next Generation, creating a lasting family legacy with the help of a loving God. And Sarah, let me ask you, you've got three uh, young children. What do you do on a daily basis to, to impart that blessing? Yeah, I love doing this because I, and I did it today in the shower. I speak the word over them every day. I, and they hear me in the car, I drive them to school, and they hear me, I have our verses that I say every single day. And then I also tell them, okay, let's put on the armor of God. And so they put on the helmet of salvation, the breastplate, and they go through everything. And then we say, how can we pray for each other today? What are the things that you would like to see God do? Then when they get in the car on the way home, I ask them about what we prayed about. Mm -hmm. How did that go? Did God do these things? What did Jesus show you? And so those are some great ways that we do that every single day. We do Bible time, you know, over breakfast. We don't get to do it every day because some days we're late. That's <laughs> <laughs> a surprise. I'm glad to know you run late in your house, too. Oh, well, yeah. Uh, that's, that's pretty common. <laughs> um, we do Bible time. We try and snag that. You know, I really minimize TV. We don't do a lot of TV. You know, they watch some of the VeggieTales, but they're getting too old for that now. And so yeah. I'm trying to encourage my son. He really likes uh, creation stuff. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, talk to him about nature and God and seeing what God is doing. So looking for opportunities always to point back to Jesus. Yeah, right. and there are a lot of great resources uh, oh, that yeah. are in the marketplace today. Yeah. Well, you know, Sarah, you also do a lot, well, both of you, you do a lot of work with reaching, mm -hmm. and very important that you reach the next generation. Mm -hmm. So once you kind of do it in your own home, how can you take that same concept of passing down the blessing globally, in a sense? Yeah. I think, you know, we talk about that in here, about passing that. And, and really, there's a very important part in here that talks about, it's, I believe, in Chapter 11, where it talks about increasing what God has done in your heart and not just expecting God to just per maintain, you know, and keep the same level mm -hmm. that you have in your generation, but to really expect God to grow and to explode what he's done in your heart into the next generation, because that's God's plan is always increase, always increase. So looking for opportunities, how can, and, the, and Psalms talks about this, one generation declares the glories of God to the next. So how in my generation do I pass that on, whether I'm a parent or not? Sometimes people think, well, I'm not a parent, so I don't have to do anything about yeah, that. My kids are grown. Or yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and it's somebody else's responsibility. Well, if that's true, then we're all up a crick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if we all have that mentality, mm -hmm. oh, that's, oh, you know, your kids that's are grown, no big deal. Right? Then we are really, we're in a sad state of affairs. We need to. And so some of the ways we can do that and talk about it in the book is through being involved in your church, through Sunday school, through going on missions trips, through, through uh, investing in the next generation, praying for the school in your neighborhood. How many times do we need prayer over universities, over right. schools? Come on. Mm. Let me uh, kind of take a little diversion here because, Marilyn, you, you blessed me with this right before uh, we, we came on the air. I don't know if I can hold this up. But this is Khartoum, Sudan, northern mm -hmm. Sudan, fundamentally Islamic, mm -hmm. um, Sharia law dominated Muslim state. And you've been to this place to preach the gospel. You've been to Islamabad in, in Pakistan right. to preach the gospel. Right. Uh, you guys, like I said, have crisscrossed the globe uh, numerous times every year. Uh, I know we, one of the, the major prayer calls that we get in is, is people dealing with anxiety, people dealing with fear. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just wanted you to just kind of speak on that for a moment and, and just kind of, uh, how, how can you go to a place like this and, and not be afraid? Well, I, I, you know, people ask that, but I think God gives you the grace to do these things. So when you're in the middle of it, you're not, all, you're not just real fearful. Sarah was with me in Sudan 10 years ago, and we had challenges, no question at that time. Khartoum, mm -hmm. same place. But I kept feeling I was to go back, and so we pressed on it. Never could get in. Uh, Sarah's husband went in one time, and it was so dangerous. I said, come home, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, we couldn't get in. But, you know, you don't give up. And fear will make you give up. But mm -hmm. faith will bring you through. And so what I do when, and there are times you're fearful, when you stand up before a crowd that last night we had 67,000 people in a stadium in Khartoum, anybody could shoot you. Yeah. You know, and so you have to speak faith to your fear. Well, God called me here. Uh, I'm here in his plan. I can do all things. So you replace your fear with your faith. Uh, Pakistan, same way. I mean, mm -hmm. we've had five crusades in Pakistan. And I think if God calls you there, but I'll tell you one thing I had to do one time, and I think it settled a big issue of fear. Mm -hmm. The devil said, you know, well, they're going to kill you. And he just kept, it echoed and echoed and echoed before I got there. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, what if they did? 
you know, I said, what if they killed me? I would be a martyr. You get more people saved in your death than your life. And you know, that was the end of the <laughs> fear. That shut up that voice. Sometimes you have to look at the fear and say, so it dies, that's so bad. <laughs> and then, so I think facing the fear with faith and not running from mm -hmm. it, you know. But again, there's a special grace. You're going to Ethiopia this summer. Yeah, and you know, Mom, talking about fear, there's a chapter, chapter 14, oh, talks about factoring out fear in your life, mm -hmm. getting yeah. fear. Because it's true, every single person on the planet wrestles with fear. Right. And so this chapter absolutely helps you deal with it and to get out of it. And this, I think, is probably one of the most powerful chapters in the book to help us, because that's universally true. We all wrestle with fear from time to time. Right. Well, we have a question so you for get you guys. Interesting yeah. question. From, I know, this uh, is very good. From Michael. Hi, Michael. Okay. <laughs> well, he says, is it possible to pray blessings in the opposite direction? In other words, like for the child praying for the parent yes. or for the aunts and uncles that may not be, may not know God. Can you do that? I believe you can. Yes. Well, I totally believe you can. Yes. I don't think God, I think sometimes as humans we try and think, well, you can't do this, you can't mm -hmm. do, you know, we put our little boundaries on. And God is not about boundaries. Mm -hmm. He absolutely. And so I talked to, because in my generation, there are a lot of our parents who don't know Christ. You know, they didn't pass on faith to us. And so now we're saved and we think, well, what about my parents? I'm concerned for them. Absolutely. How many times have I heard of kids praying for their parents right. and their parents, whether they get on their deathbed or something, they come, turn around and have an experience with Christ. So I also just want to ask you now real quick, kind of, when, when you get rid of these things, all these kind of curses or whatever that was passed down, can they come back? Or do you have to be on the watch for them or, or once they're gone, are they gone for good? Uh, I believe when you speak the word to them, mm -hmm. uh, you absolutely get a release, no question. But it's like sickness. The enemy will come back and try to bring the same thing on you. And Nahum 1, 9, I love this verse, says, This affliction shall not return the second time. Mm -hmm. And so I think you have to speak to those things. Now, it seems like if you keep doing it over a period of time, then pretty soon I think the enemy just gives up on you and thinks, okay. well, you know, it's not going to work. But you may have to speak to certain temptations that you've been involved in or certain things. But I think there'll come a time when you'll be totally free. What do you think? I, th I think you need to be careful, Mom, because I think there can be addictive behaviors that True. if you go back and flirt around, if you're an alcoholic oh, yeah, right. and you go back to a bar, Absolutely. you know, 20 years later, don't expect there not to be that pull on you saying, hey. Yeah, don't you know, put yourself. Yeah, right. don't, don't open opportunities. No. I think there's some common sense things. It's like, hey, that's done. That's a dead issue. I'm not going back right, to revisit back. it. And it's right. not a Lazarus. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't right. raise it from the dead. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that's not my environment. Right. Mm -hmm. That's not my choice. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to give the enemy any, mm -hmm. any leeway or open doors mm -hmm. into bringing nope. that generational... Uh, curse and that generational burden back. Yep. There is something I think that uh, really is brought out in the book and will be very helpful to everyone. Uh, one believing person in a family can sanctify the family. Mm. Wow. You know, we say, well, you know, uh, my husband's not there, or my wife or mm -hmm. my children, my parents, but just one. Mm -hmm. And my mother was the one for her family, 11 children, and it affected her parents, it affected everyone in her family. One. And so I think you have to point to yourself and say, I'm the one. I'll be the one. And I love blessing the next generation because it helps you to be the one. Yeah. Could you lead us in a prayer right now? I know there's friends watching, people watching this very moment, who God's speaking to them powerfully uh, through, through this interview and through, through the things you're, you're sharing here about stopping those things that have been mm -hmm. a plague on their family, plague on their name, and moving into the blessings that God really yes. has. Can you lead us in that generational yes. prayer blessing? Father, we thank you that you love families. That's the whole name of the game in the Bible, our family. And so we just repent of anything in our families that has set up an opportunity for the enemy to bring a curse from gener generation to generation. And we rebuke the enemy that would devour our families, our children, our marriages, our grandchildren, great-grandchildren. And we are saying, as for us and our household, we will serve the Lord. This family is committed to Jesus Christ. This family is a generation blessing on the earth. And God, I thank you over and over again. You've proved yourself true to us personally and to our households. In Jesus' name, amen.